is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2022 mercedes-benz e450 formatic all-terrain because wagons are still cool without a doubt but anyways wanted to check this one out because you of course have the practical body style of a wagon and this is actually a seven seater as well and i get more into that within this video of course and of course you get all the luxury and tech that you would normally get with an e-series sedan as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so msrp for the e450 all-terrain will start at sixty-eight thousand four hundred dollars powering the beast is going to be a three liter turbocharged inline six-cylinder engine with mild hybrid drive as well 362 horsepower 5500 rpm 369 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to all four wheels through the formatic all-wheel drive system that power sent to the ground through a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters which of course you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time according to mercedes is going to come in at approximately 5.3 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 28 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in this one what did they mention to you guys the drive modes the drive mode buttons labeled dynamic select it's going to be located just to the left of the touchpad controller it's going to give you different drive modes like eco comfort sport off-road off-road plus and individual allowing you to adjust things like the shift points the throttle response the air suspension and the steering sensitivity as well so having now gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifter and acceleration here to the test all at the same time and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters react and see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right so we are in first gear in three two one go love that sound quick insanely quick paddle shifters without a doubt yeah that'll definitely get the job done this is a fun to drive wagon <laughs> you don't always get that so gotta give mercedes-benz credit for that the paddle shifters are insanely quick the acceleration throws you into the back of the seat so you're most definitely not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway this thing's quite a blast i like it but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 14.2 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.6 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at a very impressive 109 feet as far as the braking feel goes it bites very well the braking feel is perfect definitely not going to have any issues there there's no dead spots it definitely brings you to an insanely quick stop and it substantiates that number without a doubt then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension but you also get an adaptive suspension monitoring each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering again giving you the best of both worlds so that is a very nice suspension component and one i always like to emphasize whenever it pertains to any review that i'm actually doing but it gets better than that because you actually also get an air suspension with the e-wagon as well which is beautiful because that is also going to contribute to a much smoother ride as well and speaking of insanely smooth ride without a doubt now i will say these roads in hagerstown are pretty darn nice but having said that still the ride quality has been impeccable here in the e-wagon without a doubt much better than most of the other cars that i've reviewed so far this year so that is absolutely amazing but the first thing i noticed when i got in this one though is the cabin noise or lack thereof this thing is insanely insanely quiet and that's due in part because of several reasons first off there's an acoustic comfort package that goes for one thousand one hundred dollars that gives you acoustic laminated front windshield and front door glass as well also thicker insulation around the doors and thicker insulation more than just around the doors and plenty of areas of this vehicle but it's made for an extremely quiet and serene ride here in the e-wagon so i absolutely love that as far as steering feel goes it's excellent even with it being in comfort mode right now that i have it in it's still a really nice steering feel it leans a little bit more towards the heavier side of things and then of course you got sport mode and sport plus which puts it even more so at a heavier steering feel which is even better so gotta love that as far as visibility goes i can actually see perfectly fine out the back so definitely not going to have any issues with rear visibility rain sensing windshield wipers also come standard and there is a head-up display available for an 
additional $1,100 if you wanted to go that route then as well. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Mercedes-Benz E450 4Matic All-Terrain. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz E-Wagon. I'm just going to call it that because it's quite a long name if I said everything. But anyways, let's go ahead and start with the one new color for the 2022 model year, which is going to be nautical blue metallic. So if you wanted that new color, that's the one you're shooting for. So anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the front of course on that front grille you will find twin chrome front slats they definitely look quite good there mercedes-benz emblem of course in the middle just below you're going to either get an aluminum trim on the bottom portion of that front bumper or gloss black and we do of course have the gloss black quite obviously to the sides full led headlights do come standard they do come with led daytime running lights along with the automatic feature but not only that newly standard for the 2022 e-wagon is going to be automatic high beams meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bump it back up to high beams then so definitely a safety feature and convenience feature really in itself there but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one now go ahead and make our way to the side of the e-class so but now since we are around to the side of this one you're either going to get aluminum or gloss black roof rails all the way to the top so that's pretty cool again aluminum or gloss black window surrounds then as well chrome accents on the door handles as well as some chrome accents on the upper portion of those side skirts as well there taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored or gloss black depending upon which configuration that you go with but they are power adjustable heated with led integrated turn signals and power folding as well which doesn't always come standard even on luxury vehicles so i'd like to emphasize that taking a look down at the wheel configuration 19 inch multi-spoke aluminum alloys do come standard however there are 19 and 20 inch wheel designs available so do want to mention that as well but Another option I wanted to mention that we don't unfortunately have today is there are soft closed doors available for an additional $550. So do like a vacuum suction kind of thing where it's going to suck the doors in when it gets close enough to actually closing. So that's a pretty cool feature that Mercedes has done for quite a while now. But anyways, pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. And so but now since we are around to the back of the E450 formatic here, no shark fin antenna. That is pretty cool. It's such a much cleaner look than I'm used to seeing because every other vehicle that I review, I feel like has a shark fin antenna all the way to the top, but this one doesn't and I like it. Anyways, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard rear window wiper just below that. Just below all of that, you do have some chrome accents that tie together the two taillights. LED taillights, by the way, coming standard across the board, so you gotta love that as well. Then making our way down all the way to the bottom here, you're either going to get aluminum trim or gloss black trim on the lower portion of that rear bumper there and to the sides integrated dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So but now since we are around to the back, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, it is a power rear hatch. There's a button on the key fob, button on the hatch itself, and a button on the driver's side door then as well, actually. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at an even 35 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down there, bumping that up to 64 cubic feet with the seats down. There is some cargo lighting, of course, in the cargo area. There are some tie-down anchors. There is some storage nets located on the side. There's actually some grocery bag hooks as well back there, but the very coolest part about the cargo area is that it doubles as a rear facing third row seat in typical wagon form. So not all wagons do that, but this one does. And I absolutely love that. So that is why I said at the beginning of this video, this thing does seat up to seven adults. So you actually have an extra two seats facing the back in the cargo area, which I absolutely love. My mom used to pick me up from the bus stop back in the day with her station wagon that had that as well. So I, I am a big fan of that. But anyways, then making our way to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 36.1 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row. There is a rear center 
armrests with cup holders for those rear passengers. There is rear ventilation, of course. Below that rear ventilation, you can find two phone charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet. There are rear window sunshades for an additional $380 if you wanted to go that route. Heated rear seats go for $580 then if you wanted to go that route then as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Power adjustable front seats with four way power lumbar coming standard. Memory settings for up to three different drivers. MB Tech's upholstery is going to be the standard finish for the seating. However, leather seating is available for an additional $1,620. Heated seats are going to come standard, but if you wanted ventilated front seats, that goes for $450. And there's actually massaging seats that are optional then as well. There is also a warmth and comfort package that goes for $1,050 that gives you rapid heating front seats, but it also adds a heated front armrest and heated steering wheel then as well. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was plenty comfortable. I definitely didn't have any issues there because of the lumbar support specifically, definitely not gonna have any issues with seat comfort. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable. It is leather wrapped and it is heated if you wanted to spend an additional $250. It's also actually a wood leather combination that goes for $600 if you wanted that then as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. You got lock at the very top, unlock just below that and that button to pop the rear hatch. But remote start can be had with the Mercedes Me app. All you have to do is download that and you got your remote start. But essentially it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So I'm just gonna simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just below the gauge cluster there and so once started up speaking of the gauges there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard and of course it is completely customizable there's so many different looks and so many different displays you can put for those digital gauges changes the color changes the look itself completely so that is pretty darn cool that's why i love mercedes gauges because it really does give you full customization there and of course you also have your basics like outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty trip a trip b everything else that you expect to find on a digital gauge cluster of course then make our way to overall interior quality a power sunroof is going to come standard panorama roof goes for one thousand dollars we do have that today if you wanted to go that route Dual zone climate control coming standard. Tri zone climate control goes for $760. You will also get 64 colors of ambient lighting that comes standard, so that's pretty cool. Home link controls can be found just below the frameless rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors. Wireless phone charger goes for $200. Another thing I really like about the E-Class wagon here is that you're either gonna get one of two standard wood finishes, and there's other finishes as well, but you're either gonna get an ash wood finish or burl walnut finish. As far as the interior goes, just above the passenger side glove box, as well as surrounding the cup holders and the touchback controller and all that fun stuff. And it's authentic wood and it continues onto the doors as well. So I absolutely love that. It gives it a very high end look. So big fan of that. Of course, just in front of that touchpad controller, you have a little bit of rubberized storage, phone charging port, 12 volt power outlet, also dual cup holders right there as well. And within the center armrest, two more phone charging ports and a decent amount of storage within that. So also I almost forgot to mention, you do have an overhead sunglass holder up top here as well, which is pretty cool. But overall, interior quality is insanely nice. Specifically, I'm loving the wood finishes as far as that goes. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display coming standard to match the 12.3 inch gauge cluster, of course. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Factory navigation system is going to come standard but my very favorite part about essentially all mercedes-benz infotainment screens if you swipe up from the very bottom there you're going to have a theme section that gives you different themes that will adjust everything about the interior including ambient lighting including that gauge cluster and so many different other aspects so if you were to play around with that you'll see there are so many different options that you have it really changes the entire feel and look of the e-class so i absolutely love that but anyways of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and so by the way when it comes to the sound systems eight speakers is going to be the standard setup however there is a 13 speaker burmester sound system that comes with the premium package which goes for twenty four hundred dollars that is going to give you 590 watts and a nine channel digital amplifier so that is actually the one we have today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Probably the worst song I could possibly pick for that test, but ton of bass, I could tell you that without a doubt. Crystal clear as well as you would expect from a Burmester 13 speaker sound system. And the very best part, 
are the speaker covers. They're not plastic, they're like aluminum, I believe, but definitely a very high-end feel, very high-end finish to those Burmester speaker covers, again, without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the E-Class in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, but also a surround view monitor if you were to go with that premium package, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start, although the wagon isn't tested by IIHS, the E-Class sedan is an IIHS top safety pick plus. So I would assume the wagon would be the exact same thing. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard crosswind assist, a blind spot assist, and adaptive braking technology as well. But then if you were to go with the driver assistance package, that's really where you're gonna get all of those advanced safety features. And that goes for $1,950 by the way, but that gives you adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, blind spot assist, lane keep assist, lane change assist, active brake assist with cross traffic alert, congestion, emergency braking, automatic emergency braking, speed limit recognition, and route based speed adaptation then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the E-Wagon, rear facing third row is freaking awesome. That would be enough of a reason for me to get the car right there, just because of the memory, I guess. But when you pick your kids up from the bus stop, definitely let them climb into the cargo area and get in that way. And go ahead and face the rear because that is so stinking cool. Excellent interior quality as well, especially with all the wood finishes. I absolutely love that. Great tech as expected, amazing ride quality as well. And really that's to be expected with an adaptive suspension plus that air suspension then as well. As far as room for improvement goes, this thing can certainly get quite pricey because Mercedes tends to do that with all of the different options that are available. I guess that gives it a lower starting price point, but there are definitely a good bit of options with this thing. And that safety package, that last thing I mentioned there with the, all the advanced safety, that I believe at least that should come standard on the E-Class because so many other manufacturers are giving all those features coming standard. I think Mercedes should certainly at least do that as well. You can keep the other options, just make the safety standard. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the E-Wagon in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.